Welcome to the podcast, Jared. So happy to have you here. Yeah, happy to be here, Carrie. So before we dive in, I'm super pumped to talk about the business that you've started and just a little bit about your background because we've never had anyone on the podcast talking about supply chain or inventory management. So this is definitely a first, but I'm I'm super pumped because <laughs> um I having a subscription box business, you know, for 3 years and growing it out of my house in California, I moved to a townhouse in Seattle and basically had to like sell car, like we had to sell my husband's car to basically turn my garage into the our own little uh, inventory management <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> and it was a total nightmare. And so I would love, <laughs> I'm excited to kind of ask some questions about that because I know with a lot of people who are listening, um, whether they're interested in possibly, you know, getting rid of the inventory out of their house or, you know, growing their business to sell it, having this kind of stuff set up before you're selling a business, I would say is very key. So I'm super pumped to have you on here. So um, introduce yourself and just tell everyone a little bit about your business because it's it sounds amazing. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, Kara, for the introduction. So um, mm -hmm. my name is Jared Ward. I'm the CEO and founder of Luminous. Luminous is inventory and supply chain management for the modern e-commerce business. And I'll, I'll we kind of need to define mm -hmm. that a little bit. But um, yeah, it's it's funny. As you say, inventory management it, there almost always has to be a sound effect afterwards like a ugh, inventory management it's, it's that boring thing that like e-commerce attracts very very creative driven people but they're mm -hmm. they're not traditional operators a lot of the time so yeah yeah a, a lot of times inventory is just this thing it's just icky and you, you just have to do it and and that's why for a lot of e-commerce companies, it doesn't get a lot of love. And I, I think rightfully yeah. so in the beginning stages. Like if you start selling on Etsy or it, you just start doing a small subscription business on, on Shopify, it, it really only becomes a big issue once you hit a certain revenue milestone or you yeah. start selling across multiple channels. But that's when it starts getting really icky and you don't really want to touch it. And it, it ends up causing a lot of problems of if you don't solve it creates solutions for that or implement a system to keep it under control. Um, but yeah, but quick, like two seconds on my background. My background is in e-commerce and supply chain. I've launched multiple products. I dropped off college to do an Etsy shop. In fact, you've got barn door hardware in the background. I used to build that by hand. That that's I dropped out of school to build barn door hardware oh. and barn doors and baby gates by hand on Etsy and Amazon. Um, so that's then I had a whole myriad of different experiences of supply chain e-commerce. I was CEO of an e-commerce company that did $15 million a year in revenue. We were multi-channel. All of that experience led to me starting Luminous. Mm -hmm. And it was just because I, I noticed a massive gap in the market for inventory and supply chain operations for modern e-commerce owners. There's not a good system that actually handles that correctly or, 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 you know, addresses the specific issues of modern e-commerce companies. Can we, what is, what does that mean? Modern e-commerce company? I'm curious of what, what that means to you. <laughs> yeah. So, so think about it. If, if I launched a product back in like 1990 or 1980s, um, mm -hmm. it's, it'd be the evolution of that company and therefore the needs of their system was so different. I mean, back then, if you launched a product, it's, you're almost exclusively, all you could sell is what you had physical space for. So that could be the corner of a street. It could be a friend who has a specialty retail store and they're giving you some shelf space. It could be like, like you're. Your problems were very predictable because your growth was very gradual. You invent a widget. You maybe back then, maybe were sourcing from China. More than likely, you're doing just a manufacturer you knew in the United States. Then you start selling on a corner. Then you start selling to a special retailer. Then you start selling to HSN. And then maybe you have a buyer that gets you into Target. Like It's very predictable, rigid supply chain lines. The modern e-commerce business... I mean, take all of that and throw that shit out the window. <laughs> like you can, you can do whatever you, you can do whatever you want. Like people are sourcing, manufacturing. They sell on Amazon. On they sell to Target. They sell on Etsy. They this 
all of that presents a d- totally different problems than you did back in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. I love that so much. Um, yes, I love all of it. I, was, I, I wasn't sure where you're going to go with like modern e-commerce business because I think there's so many things that, um, I don't know, we could kind of look at a modern business being, but I love that. I think it's very accurate. And um, I think the whole, like you can only sell what you physically have in your house or like in your, you know, in your space and that kind of thing. So I would love to do a little bit. Oh, keep going. Let, let, me, let me give you one example, just to, just to illustrate what I, because the modern e-commerce, it's such an important concept because mm-hmm. just, just think about the complexities that you introduce to your operations without even knowing it. So let's say I source a widget and I put it in a warehouse and I start selling on Shopify. Pretty basic, right? I, and the orders come in, just print out the shipping label, it goes out like, eh, it's not, not that big of a deal. You're just writing purchase orders. What's very common with modern e-commerce businesses is, okay, yeah, I'm going to start selling on Etsy. Great. It starts going well. Hey, you know, I'm going to start doing this FBA thing. Mm. So then you start sending things to FBA. Then you're like, hey, you know, actually this industry is, does pretty well subscriptions. I'm going to start a subscription box every single month. Then you're like, okay, well, actually, I know a bunch of people here locally that you know, they'd be down for some wholesale. Like they want to buy a hundred units at a time. Mm-hmm. What as, as an e-commerce owner, you will say yes to all those revenue opportunities. But what you didn't consider potentially was, okay, now I have four different order sources that aren't aggregated and I have to print out shipping labels for those. How, holy crap. Like how do I solve that? Or I, I just started a subscription business. How do I keep in, how do I keep all of my allocated and pending in line so that I'm not overselling on my other channels? Like that, that's something unique to subscriptions. Or now Amazon, you now just introduced an additional distribution center that you have to replenish. Mm-hmm. And if you go out of stock on Amazon, that's a big deal. So it's like, we'll say yes, modern e-commerce businesses, because it's so easy to go, go multi-channel and do these things, they'll say yes. Mm-hmm but they don't think about the the repercussions operationally. Like it's, you know, you got to replenish another distribution center. You have to keep in, you have to have an inventory system that makes sure you understand you're allocated so you don't oversell. Um, so that that's the difference between like old e-commerce and the modern e-commerce business. Yeah, I love that. And it's so true. Like it is easy to say, yeah, like I want to do Etsy and then I want to do Shopify and then I want to do like Amazon and all these other places. But your inventory and tracking how much you have and and all, all that kind of stuff. I know a lot of the people in some of my programs definitely are always asking, how do we, how do we have an Etsy store and a Shopify store and do Amazon and do wholesale? Uh, and we're trying to do other things. Like how do we do all this stuff and main like know what we have, what we're, you know, not selling out of. So I, it's definitely a, a big problem and a common problem. So I think that's, it's really cool that you, had your, and I'd love to know a little bit more about your e-commerce business that you started. I think that would be really cool. Um, but I think the fact that you, you know, had this business, you had multiple businesses, you identified this huge gap that was happening and then started a SaaS company. I think that's really, really cool. Um, I love that. Yeah. So I, where a lot of, a lot of the experience that led to the start of Luminous was, um, when I was, I, so two things, two experiences. Number one was I ran a sourcing division or like a procurement division for madeinchina.com. And so that they're an oh. Alibaba competitor. So they're a Chinese company. Oh, and okay. so my client, so I would help e-commerce companies nail down their supply chain, specifically their factories, like mm. sourcing of a factory, making sure their defective units go down and um, just making sure all that is dialed. So, my my clients were e-commerce clients. So I, I really got to peek under the hood of a lot of e-commerce companies doing that. Um, I got to understand, you know, the their pitfalls and how they tend to run their supply chain and some issues there. And the second experience was um, I was CEO of Qualtree. And Qualtree is a personalization brand. Um, we did about $15 million a year in revenue. And we were 
multi-channel and multifaceted. It, it, it was it was very complex. Like we we, we did personalization from seven different channels. Um, we had different departments of manufacturing within the warehouse. So it's like dye sublimation and UV printing and laser engraving and embroidery. Um, so yeah, between those two, and then also me having launched my own products and my own e-commerce business, it's, I realized that, yeah, it, there's this concept of a modern e-commerce business and the people that you go to, or excuse me, the companies that you go to to solve your problems. Like when I was CEO of Qualtry, it's like, I don't even know my margins on my products. I don't have a central repository for all of my products. Um, things are a mess. Like I, I can't keep track of my landed cost. Mm. Um, it, it, there's like little things like that. Or I keep overselling on Etsy. Or I keep... Like wholesale is screwing up my forecast. I can't freaking forecast. Like all of those are symptoms of just not having a system of record in your business. And what I realized was when I was starting to engage with other software companies, they didn't under they didn't understand me. They they didn't get it. Like it was like we're we're NetSuite or like insert big SaaS company like Oracle or SAP. Like, well, we're SAP and you should do things this way to fix your business. And mm-hmm. it's going to cost $10,000 a month. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. it's like all there's so many dinosaurs of softwares that are going down market and they just, they don't understand e-commerce companies. Like we're not buttoned up to MBAs that, you know, are already using a $7,000 system. And, you know, it's, we sell in a very rigid way and put together like, no, e-commerce found like, we're, we're reactive. We're, we're, we're jumping around, super creative, launching things really fast. We're breaking things. And, you know, those big systems weren't made for us founders. And um, yeah, so that's, that's why I ended up starting Luminous. Like nothing out there exists that has the breadth of features to handle all of my problems and mm-hmm. an organization that is like their purpose is to help e-commerce founders and operators. So, so that's, that's why I started Luminous. So, so many good things. I just made like six different little notes of like, okay, that's a great quote or like, that's a good clip to use. <laughs> um, I would love to just know, did you have a, like a light bulb moment when you, thought of this idea, you know, maybe you were at the gym or you were, I don't know, doing whatever. I know for me, I always get good ideas when I'm doing any kind of exercising or walking my dog and I'll just be like, wow, that is light bulb flash. And it's like the best idea ever. How did, like, what moment did you come up with this idea? Yeah. So I don't, I don't think there's one moment, but uh, a moment that was very impactful Mm -hmm. was I was at, I was at mainchan.com. So back to the sourcing division days where I'm helping people source stuff from China. Um, so if I'm, if I'm helping somebody source something from China or I'm managing their purchasing, um, I have to ask how many units do you need me to purchase? And I remember, I remember very distinctly, I was asking a couple different clients. Um, we were prepping for Q4 and it was like Q2. And I was like, Hey guys, you know, Q4 is coming. Lead time's like 75 days. Um, we expect massive delays this year. I think we need to kind of get in front of purchasing. Um, how many units do you need to purchase? Not a single one of them could give me an answer on their top sellers. Like, they, mm-hmm. actually, they, it was all the same. Like, actually, I don't really know. Like, ah, it's, it's almost like just, you know, Mm, just like let's do five thousand units, and it's like, are you? What? <laughs> and as I started diving into all of those individual use cases, I realized that none of these companies had a system of record that was that was giving them actionable data to make a decision like that. Mm-hmm. And mind you, these weren't these weren't super young businesses, meaning. You know, they, they were doing more than $5 million a year and 
but like reasonably well established. And you know, they they had good data sources if if they just had a system that could compile it. So that's that was the light bulb moment. It was like, no, oh, none of these companies are adopting a system. In other words, a system has not yet emerged to be the go-to for e-commerce backend. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm I'm going after this. Amazing. And why, I know that obviously you built a business around this, but just for anyone listening that is maybe sor- uh, not sourcing, um, you know, getting products, having their like makeshift warehouse out of their house or garage or whatever, when, tell everyone why inventory management is important. Like, why should they care? Why should they keep listening to this episode? Of course oh they my would, goodness. but yeah. tell them maybe in a nutshell, why, why is it important? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, it's the... It's actually the backbone of your business. Um, mm-hmm. I think I, I would ex- I would expand it to inventory supply chain. Like I call it a system of record. The reason why it matters is, you know, once once you get to a certain point in your business, if I'm like, hey Carrie, what was your most profitable SKU this year? Like how much money did you make? Uh, how much money did you make on the ZS six four two? Yeah that matters or hey carrie you're you're selling on shopify or you're doing a subscription business was it profitable this year that stuff really matters or hey you just picked up that costco contract How, did you know you have a contribution margin of five percent and your shopify business has 50 percent? yeah you, you might want to look into that or um hey it, does your customer experience matter like, does your brand experience matter? So how many times do you, hey, Carrie, how many times did you oversell on Shopify? Like, you know, oversold by 20 units and you paid for the advertising, that acquisition cost of the customer just to tell them, hey, sorry, we're out of stock. Um, how many pissed off customers did you have um, across all of your different channels? Or, hey, you know, actually Amazon FBA, you went out of stock. Did you know that totally restarts the traction that you got on that listing? I I, I could keep going. Like <laughs> all of that is your system of record. Um, it's it, it's it's what really takes a you know small scrappy startup e commerce business to a legitimate company that's c- can potentially re- can reach their full potential. Um, and I think that's the difference between just sort of like viral, like staying in that scrappy startup phase and just sort of spiraling and like never growing and maybe even going out of business and reaching your potential. And that potential could just be like, maybe your fully loaded potential as an e-commerce business. Maybe, maybe your market, it's just like a, a $10 million business or a 6 million or a 3 million. But if with a system of record proper, implemented you can reach that full potential and have and maximize your margins i think that's that's why it matters that's so that's amazing those are like perfect examples i love them so much um and i really like how you said it can take like that scrappy startup into the next big phase of the business so i think that's amazing um let's kind of switch gears let's okay now that we know why people need this let's talk about the uh let's talk about your current business like what exactly does it do for people um yeah tell tell everyone some good things about what it does and you know who it's a good fit for maybe like who's your ideal person that you could sign a contract with now yeah so i would say um so we've talked about this modern e-commerce company Mm-hmm. The, the perfect fit for Luminous is somebody, a company who has a certain amount of complexity markers. And I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. Like a, an amazing Luminous brand would be um, doing at least $2 million a year in revenue. Um, mm-hmm. Like one to two. We, we can we can go lower sometimes. But um, generally, if if you're below like one or $2 million, just, just keep going on Google Sheets. Like... Um, you're probably a little bit small to afford the cost of a system of record. But um, yeah, so anybody post $1 million in revenue, you have multiple channels. Mm-hmm. So that could be Etsy and expanding to Shopify. 
that's like that's something common that we get um or you know etsy shopify amazon and wholesale um another mix could be subscription like they do shopify subscription and one other channel um those are all complexity markers and it just means it's difficult to manage like if you have to put together a forecast by downloading or exporting all of your different order sources, have a complex formula that maps all of your different SKUs to the purchasing unit. Um, mm-hmm. And then you have to do like, that's, that's kind of who we're for. Um, the more complex e-commerce businesses, multi-channel, multiple distribution centers, it may be a subscription, somebody with a subscription. Um, yeah. And so what do we do for them? Well, we're, we're, you're basically running all of your backend business through us. Like we, we aggregate all of your data. So we will connect to all of your sales channels. Um, we will push inventory numbers to all of your different sales channels. We, we manage all of your purchasing, um, all of the payments from your purchasing, the logistics that, that get it there, um, or at least the visibility of that, um, we push all your cogs to QuickBooks or your, your accounting system of record. Um, we automatically deplete the inventory numbers. If you're a bigger warehouse, we do all the fulfillment. So pick, pack, and ship. Um, so managing that whole process and, and really dialing in your warehouse. So when a new employee comes in, like it, it's, you know, very standardized. The process is like you do a pick list and then you do it on the tablet and, and you scan all the products before they go into the box. Um, Luminous also has, we specifically solve the problems of modern e-commerce businesses. So subscription, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, how we how we book pre-sales in Luminous. It's, it's easy to do a pre-sell or like a drop in Luminous. Um, um, we scrape your system to get like allocated or pending of your upcoming subscription so that you don't oversell um, on one of the months. Um, And then for example, wholesale, we have a whole module dedicated to wholesale for e-commerce businesses branching into wholesale. Um, We have an invoicing module. We have a B2B point of sale that makes that process way easier to manage. Um, and then if you start selling to big box retail like Target or Walmart or Costco, um, we embed EDI, EDI into our platform. Um, so we just make all those all of those complex things that happen as the modern e-commerce businesses grow. We we handle mm-hmm. all of them. And on top of the cherry on top is um, we provide excellent service, super hands on. Anytime you ask any client of Luminous, um, we fly to their warehouse and we get them implemented and dialed within a couple of days. Um, but we're super hands-on physically present and we make sure that it, the system actually works because it's very challenging to implement a system of record. And we know that. Okay. Um, so for brands that, you know, they have the, I forget what you call them, complexity markers. I think that that was Mm -hmm. like that. Um, So you're selling on, let's say you're a subscription box, you're doing, you have Shopify and then you're wanting to do maybe, you know, Amazon subscriptions or I don't know, a different, a different um, channel and you're doing 1 million per year and you're kind of struggling maintaining all the things. What, like, what's the process for someone who might be interested in working with your company? Like, what should they do? So I'm assuming you have a web- you have a website where they there's a yep. <laughs> you know contact us or learn more but like if someone's interested what can they kind of start thinking about if they are like wow this this seems like a good fit for me yeah so i've just got to join luminous.com join luminous.com and on on any one of the buttons we link you to to book a demo with us um the in the demo we just we really just do a discovery call um we make sure that it's actually a good fit for your business and for example, if if we think another tool is a good, a better fit for you, like let, let's say like you're really simple, like you're, you're not really that complex, mm-hmm. we'll actually just recommend another tool for you or, or we'll, we'll give you our two cents. Like, hey, you know, actually, I wouldn't use this or this. Actually, there's a really cool, simple 
download on the Shopify store that could, that would probably work for you. Um, we do stuff like that. Um, we're, we're not trying to sell the whole world. We're just trying to sell people who are, who are actually good fits that we can help. So yeah, book a demo. We'll do a discovery call and we'll let you know if, if we think it's a great fit. Um, and if you are, then we'll send you a proposal. Um, we'll fly out to your warehouse and we'll get you implemented. And what kind of, so for someone who's interested, what can they expect to to benefit from it? Obviously you're going to help them with their business, but in terms of like saving them time, saving them mental stress, saving them money, does your business help them with saving any of those things? And maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the number one thing that a system of, first off, a system of record, what it helps you do at the end of the day is make better decisions for your business. Mm -hmm. And it gives you the data to make better decisions much easier. So if, if you're in, you know, prepping for Q4, forecasting, like how much should I order or what was my most profitable channel that I should double down on or what, wow, this skew sucks. We, we just need to kill this. Um, Th- those are some some indirect benefits that just having a system of record, like you can just pull that stuff up and know what to do and make a better decision. But direct benefits for inventory systems are t- it's typically overselling or under purchasing. So mm-hmm. we we in Luminous we do a lost opportunities report, which is uh, in on average, um, depending on the size of your company, but on average a Luminous client will we will save them um, upwards of $60,000 a year um, just through making sure you don't go out of stock or you're not under purchasing. So you, you're, you know, you're selling or excuse me, over purchasing. Um, Like, so like dead stock, trying to prevent dead stock. Um, So yeah, it's, it's a big deal, especially for young e-commerce companies. No, absolutely. I love that. And I think anything that can save people, you know, time, energy, make better business decisions, of course, is a no brainer. Um, But to also help uh, save them money is, you know, that's obviously, obviously an important thing. Um, I would love to talk a little bit about just, so you come up with this idea, you, you know, you've experienced all sorts of different phases of e-commerce, you know, companies working for the, you know, madeinchina.com, having your own businesses, creating this business, uh, Luminous. I keep saying this business, but you've had many. So um, good to be specific. What what was the, like, how did you start doing it? You're like, oh my God, I want to create this SaaS company. Like, okay, now what the hell do I do? Because obviously e-com is totally different than technology. So how did you sort of make the transition? And like, what did you do to get, what were the early days of the business? Like, what did you do to kind of get started? Oh, it was insane. Um, So I actually... (laughs) I went to Qualtry, like the company that I was CEO of. I Mm -hmm. actually went to that company to start building Luminous. In fact, I told the board, I was like, hey, I'm coming here to, um, I'll be a director of supply chain, but I'm going to build this tool. And that's where I started. So I went to work for a company that was my perfect ICP, like, they were our ideal customer profile for Luminous. And I started building, um, I funded the development myself. Um, we, you know, we got it working for Qualtry. And hmm. um, then eventually, actually, you know, becoming CEO wasn't even part of the plan there. Um, that actually just happened, like the, the former CEO left and then the board asked me to be CEO. Um, so that was... That was random, but um, <laughs> the the process was it was just very iterative. Like I was I was building modules for the specific use cases that I was going through on a daily basis. So we started out with like purchase order management, and then it ventured into the warehouse management and inventory management, and we slowly expanded from there. And once. After about a year, once I had like a minimum viable product, I went and sold it on the market. So I, I went and sold it to five other clients, beta clients. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, we booked probably about $150,000 in ARR. Um, and yeah, about uh, like 12000 ish in MRR. 
And then I took that traction and I went and fundraised. Mm. So, so beta sold, got traction, took that traction, went and fundraised. So we fundraised from a bunch of different uh, investors, uh, 2.6 million. And yeah, then I, then I actually, I resigned as CEO of Qualtry and I went all in on Luminous. And yeah, we've just been growing ever since, growing the team and growing our clientele, improving the product. And when was when did you first start working on it? What year is that? <clears throat> Good question. Actually, <laughs> let me see. Um, I believe it was. Yeah, this would have been twenty twenty. And yeah, when twenty twenty. And when, okay, so you're working at the other company, um, sort of getting the, the the bare bones done, got funding, you know, tested it, et cetera. When do you feel like it started to like get some traction with, I don't know, in any capacity? When do you feel like, how long did it take to start getting some traction? Um, the traction honestly has, I mean, we're getting tons mm-hmm. of traction right now. Um, it's, Build an MVP, got on five clients. Honestly, for the n- next year after that, uh, we didn't really sell the product much. Like we kept it in beta and just we're, we're constantly improving. Um, it was it wasn't until about like five ish months ago when we actually started to like okay let's let's start selling this thing. And, um, yeah, since then we've been having consistent, like 15% month over month growth, um, every single month. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been wild. Um, yeah, growing really well and, um, making our investors really happy and making us happy. But, um, yeah, we're hoping to sustain good growth and continue to keep the, keep the experience that we provide at a, a super high level we're, we're never going to have that drop. So awesome. And what kind of, um, I can imagine you went through a lot of making mistakes and, you know, doing a lot of things right. But I think with any business, especially when it's a totally different thing, you're going to definitely make a ton of uh, mistakes and errors. What do you think your biggest, <laughs> just like the, the shitty oh. scrappy mistakes in the early days that we all make when we start new businesses. I know I've made like 7 million, but what were like the big ones that you've kind of made and you're willing to share? Yeah. With, with, with venture funded SaaS companies, um, you, you learn a lot about structuring a company. If you're the OG founder, like the, the original mm-hmm. person who started it and like um, bringing on co-founders and early employees is uh, I, I learned so much about that. I made so many mistakes there. Um, and I, I would just say read up if you're, eh. If you're an e-commerce founder, e-commerce companies, yes, like equi- equi- of course, equity matters and the early people they bring on. But the the margin of error is much greater uh, for SaaS companies. Um, it, equity is a lot more complex. Um, hiring, it, and I, I truly underestimated that, and I, I didn't learn enough about it at the beginning to make informed, educated decisions. So that and that's where I made mistakes. Um, and, you know, you pay for those mistakes like a year after the decision is made. And um, not exactly a year, like whatever, like six months to 18 mm-hmm. months after after those decisions are made. And I would just say, learn as much as you can about equity. Chat, you know, ChatGPT is such a great tool for just educating yourself. I yeah. would literally have a conversation with ChatGPT about, hey, I'm starting a um, a SaaS company. What are some recommendations you would have for like structuring the corporate docs? If I bring on, what's a vesting schedule? Like, um, how should I stock options versus shares? Um, how should my equity? 
those those things matter a lot. And I would also say like value your equity um, in the company or really, sorry, value the equity of the company and your equity in the company. Um, and, you know, if you, if you give away equity or, or if you, you know, you commit to commit to giving away equity, um, make sure that the expectations are very clear. Like if those, if the people that you give equity away to, um, if they're not really in it, which you attract, you attract when you have, when you're a VC funded startup, you attract a lot of entitled people, a lot of entitled people who, you know, they want to be on the bus, but they don't want to participate in the journey. Mm. And of course they'll never admit that, but it's, that's your job as a leader to see through that, um, to see through their bullshit. And yeah, I would say make sure that you learn as much as you can so you can protect yourself, but then also take as much responsibility on your own where you're setting clear expectations for what equity means or what just working at an early stage startup means. Um, I, I made a lot of mistakes there and learned a lot of lessons. So That's amazing. Um, I can imagine. I'm laughing at the entitled people too. I am. Um, I just watched, did you see them? Did you see super pumped on Netflix? The Uber, like the, oh, the, what? the story of Uber. Oh yes, I did. I saw all of it. Yep. Wasn't it? Did, what did yes. you think? I loved it. Oh, I thought it was fascinating. Oh my God. I, I also just watched, uh, we crashed. Oh my God. That was amazing. I, I watched the Uber one and I was like, Oh, I, you know, it just popped up on my feed and I'm like, Oh, let me check it out. And I, I just, I could not stop watching it. I, I binge watched the entire, I don't know how many episodes it was. It was quite a lot. Um, I think it was like in a day and a half. I literally like stayed up until, you know, 2 AM watching it. I thought it was really interesting, but, uh, just the characters and like the story of, you know, the company and like how it started. And I don't know, I never, I realized I actually never knew anything about Uber and I didn't actually care about Uber to be honest, but watching that and just learning the the history and how it started and like all the tech things. And it was absolutely fascinating. I, I loved it so much. Yeah, it's crazy that Travis Kalanick and then um, mm-hmm. Adam Newman, they, oh, yeah. they were, they were true visionary. Like they were actual visionaries, mm-hmm. but they were also they were interesting people. I'll put it that way. Like, yeah, the, the, I guess I guess to be a to be a founder of that <clears throat> scale, I think you have to be a uh, uh, an outlier in good and bad ways. Yes, so. absolutely. I loved the WeWork one. That was that was amazing. I'm not definitely not a huge fan of him, but but again, like the story and the history, it's so 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 interesting and. I forget what what he called himself in the Uber movie, Super Pumped. It's called. Um, I forget the word he kept. Call, he kept referring himself to like a specific word of people who kind of do their own thing. I don't know. I'm blanking on what it is, but anyway, mm-hmm. I just thought that was really cool. Um, cool. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of ventured off a little bit just since we were talking about VCs and uh, all that kind oh, of stuff. It's, it's very interesting. The- the last piece of advice that I would say is um, something that I've learned very recently is um, your personal brand is a very big deal. And it's crazy the impact of doing content. So I, I do content on it re- regardless of the views that you get, it, it actually doesn't matter. Um, so I do a podcast ops unfiltered. I distribute long form YouTube content, just like on valuable talk- topics like this, you know, like mm-hmm. startups or e-commerce. Um, I, you know, do shorts on TikToks. Um, and yeah, so I, I just distribute a lot of content across a bunch of different platforms. And it's, it's amazing what that does for your business. People really connect with, they connect with people, not businesses. And I think, I think Luminous, uh, I might sound arrogant, but I actually think we're going to be a big part of a new wave of B2B marketing. Um, you know, all of my employees are doing content, personal branded content, and we're really loud on LinkedIn with, 
uh, not that many employees. And we have a culture of content. And because people, people, they give a shit about people, not like uh, inventory management system. So mm -hmm. they attach to the story of the people in the company. And that's the biggest thing that, that B2B companies, I think, are learning slowly. And mm -hmm. at, when you look back, when five years has passed, and I, I genuinely believe Luminous will be the number one inventory system for all of e-commerce, I think they'll look back and see it, it was because our culture of content and that we're taking advantage of you know everybody telling their individual story across all their platforms. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. It's. I mean, I I talk a lot about humanizing your business so you can, I you can basically um, separate yourself from your competitors and Amazon because Amazon is you know like the faceless brands, and it's so true. Like just sharing, you know, showing your face, sharing your story, doing video. It's like you you kind of have to do it. I I get really frustrated with people who are like, oh no, you don't have to like share your story. You don't have to share your face. No one cares, but they do care. And that is literally how you kind of build those connections. But also for a SaaS company, you know, like kind of like Neil Patel, I'm obsessed with him. I think he's a, a genius and it's kind mm -hmm. of like what he does. He has content across, you know, YouTube podcast, um, all the things, and, you know, he has um, Uber Suggest, which I'm also obsessed with. And it's like the <laughs> great, greatest SEO tool ever. Um, and it's kind of the same thing. Like you probably discover him on one of those places. And then you're like, oh, he also has this company that I can also sign up for and help my business. So I agree with you. I think the personal mm -hmm. the personal piece and content creation is is super, super important. So yes, 100%. Um, I just have one more question, just because I'm I'm personally curious. Um, so when you were starting Luminous, what were like what were the first things that you did? I know that you mentioned you got some clients and you sort of built a couple. I forget what exactly you said. You built like your kind of ideal customer personas or customer avatars. But like, what are like what are some of the first techie or like developer things that you did to kind of get started? Not get traction, but just kind of get started. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we started, we started just building a purchase order management system. So capturing the purchasing of Qualtry. So if I'm just writing a PO to my suppliers and streamlining that process, that's that's how it started so i mean um i i had already hired um offshore devs because I'd, I'd built another software before luminous um that i had actually sold to main china um but yeah so i i carried like those devs that i had used um that i had hired and sourced um i just yeah, we. I, I was working with them um, to build a purchase order management system. And really, we just went through the user experience of somebody purchasing for an e-commerce company. And um, we optimized the experience of that. Um, and yeah, that's, that's where we started. So it's just constant iteration every single night, mm -hmm. um, pushing new code every single night and going back and forth, changing things up, testing it the next day. I mean, we were just in such an iterative phase. Um, uh, we're literally making nightly updates. It's it's actually it's crazy to think back <laughs> now that you just asked that. Yeah, there was. I mean, there was a phase in the business probably for the first year and a half that literally every night there were new updates, and I think that's what you have to do as an early SaaS founder. Like you have to. You have to be, you have to iterate every single night and just be relentless. Um, otherwise, you're going to lose um, to somebody who will do that. Um, yeah, that was an interesting time. No, I'm thinking back. I hope you documented all that because I think it's it's really cool. I love looking back at, you know, like Facebook will remind me of memories like, oh, you did this six years ago. And it's like, holy shit. 
<laughs> so much has, you know, you doubt yourself so much. I think when you're in a business or you're, you know, you have a business and then you look back and you're like, wow, I've grown so much since then. So yeah, I hope just for you, you can kind of um, document it and then they can make a movie about you. You can be like the next super pumped on Netflix in like six years. <laughs> yeah. We can hear about all your crazy stories. Yeah. When I have a crazy <laughs> downfall, it'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, this was awesome and really cool to just chat about you and your background, but also this awesome company that you've built to just help so many people. I think that's amazing. Tell everyone uh, where they can find you. I know that you said you have, um, some personal channels, TikTok and some other places. And then again, remind people where they can, um, sign up for your business. If they sign up for Luminous, I keep saying your business, sign up for Luminous if they want to learn more. Yeah. So, um, Website, joinluminous.com. Um, YouTube channel is Jared underscore Ward. Um, same with my Instagram as well. Um, TikTok is Jared C. Ward. Um, yeah, follow the podcast Ops Unfiltered, which actually I, I kind of want you on that podcast, Carrie. Might have to get you back on. Um, I'd love to. <laughs> we can trade one for one. Yeah, Ops Unfiltered is... We talk with operators or founders of e-commerce companies, and we just go over the messy beginnings and scaling of e-commerce businesses. Like we go over crazy stories in Q4 and the technology that ran it, um, even if it's just Google Sheets. Like those are things that I'm genuinely curious about. So that's Ops Unfiltered. Um, That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate all your time and sharing all this amazing insight. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Gary.